Is Israel a rogue state? Its army has killed Al Jazeera's journalist Shirin Abu Akleh in cold blood. And this is not the first time. Will Israel get away with its crimes and who can hold it to account? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahalbarra. Shirin Abu Akla was a household name across the Middle East. The veteran Al Jazeera journalist earned widespread praise for more than two decades of reporting on Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory, telling stories of war atrocities and Palestinian resistance. She was shot in the head as she covered Israel's latest raid on the Jenin refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. Al Jazeera condemned the killing as a blatant murder intended to prevent journalists from conducting their duty. Qatar's emir called on those who assassinated Shirin to be brought to justice. Jamal al takes a look at what we know about the killing of Shirin. Don't shoot the messenger, unless you're an Israeli soldier. In that case, you're seemingly okay with shooting a reporter who's clearly identifiable as a journalist and poses no threat. Shirin Abu Akleh is the latest reporter to be killed by the Israeli military, which has a long history of targeting journalists and news outlets, particularly Al Jazeera. Shirin, a veteran reporter who spent her life covering events in occupied Palestine, was among a group of journalists documenting what was happening in Jenin early on Wednesday. According to eyewitnesses and video footage, she was wearing a safety vest and helmet, both of which clearly identified her as a member of the press. Despite this, or maybe because of it, Shirin was shot and killed. We were going to film the Israeli army operation and suddenly they shot us without asking us to leave or stop filming. The first bullet hit me and the second bullet hit Shireen. They killed her in cold blood because they are killers and specialize in killing only Palestinian people. We had no resistance and there was no Palestinian resistance at all at the scene. Journalist Ali Samoudi was also shot and injured in the attack. There was no exchange of fire. So there is no possibility whatsoever that a Palestinian have shot Shirin Abu Akleh. The Israeli army always uses these excuses to cover up the crimes they are committing against Palestinians, including Palestinian journalists. According to rights groups, Israel has killed 50 journalists since 2000 and injured more than 144 in the past four years alone. Inhar al-Burj. Inhar al-Burj. This is also not the first time Israel has intentionally targeted Al Jazeera. Last year, the network's office in Gaza was bombed to rubble. While journalist Javar al Bideri was assaulted by Israeli forces whilst reporting on Israel's ethnic cleansing of Arab residents in occupied East Jerusalem's Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. Israeli authorities say they've launched an investigation, but human rights groups say they have little faith in Israeli justice, particularly with renowned organizations like Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International accusing Israel of implementing a system of apartheid. Uh, there are um, human rights organizations, for example, like Beit Salem, an Israeli human rights organization, uh, that decided a long time ago that they are no longer going to even interact with the complaint system uh, within the Israeli army uh, because it is not serious. Uh, it doesn't find Israeli soldiers guilty. Qatar's foreign ministry, whose country hosts the Al Jazeera network, issued a statement. The Israeli occupation killed Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akla by shooting her in the face while wearing the press vest and a helmet. She was covering their attack in Janine refugee camp. This state-sponsored Israeli terrorism must stop and unconditional support to Israel must end. The European Union and other members of the international community have also condemned the killing. But all these condemnations have fallen short of including any sanctioning or punishment for a crime that threatens the essence of any free society, a free press. 
Shireen was killed trying to inform the world of what was happening in her country. The world now knows that in occupied Palestine, no one is safe from Israel's bullets, not even journalists. Jamal al-Shayyal, al-Jazeera. The killing of Shireen Abu Akhla triggered international condemnation. The UN Special Envoy for the Middle East peace process demanded an immediate and thorough investigation. The US ambassador to Israel also tweeted a call for a thorough probe into the circumstances of her death. Israel has proposed a joint inquiry, but the Palestinian foreign minister said it does not trust investigations by an occupying state, adding they do not lead to a place other than acquitting criminals and murderers. Last month, international and Palestinian media groups submitted a formal complaint to the International Criminal Court accusing Israel of war crimes against journalists. The Committee to Protect Journalists says 24 journalists have been killed since 2002. That figure does not include Shirin Abu Akhli. Other press freedom advocates have reported higher numbers. Israel systematically targets journalists from media outlets, including Al Jazeera. Several on board a humanitarian flotilla heading to Gaza were detained in 2010. A year ago this week, an Israeli airstrike destroyed the offices of Al Jazeera and the Associated Press in Gaza. And a month later, Israeli soldiers arrested Al Jazeera journalist Givara Budiri as she covered protests in the occupied East Jerusalem. Let's bring in our guests in West Jerusalem. Hagai Led is executive director of the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories in Doha. Aisha El Basri, researcher at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies. In Cambridge, Rami Khouri, professor of journalism at American University of Beirut and senior fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School. Welcome to the program. Hagai. How would you characterize the position of the Israeli government so far? Because when you listen to Benny Gantz, the defense minister, he seems to be implying that this could have the fire that targeted Shirin Abu Akhla could have come from the Israeli side. You have the prime minister, Naftali Bennett, saying at the same time, no, we should blame the Palestinian fighters for this. I think they've, they've pivoted very quickly from their initial efforts to deflect by suggesting uh, in numerous ways, from the prime minister down, uh, the IDF spokesperson, other government ministers, the foreign minister, who is also the alternative prime minister, all very quickly suggesting, uh, based on a short video clip, that it was Palestinian gunfire uh, that killed uh, Shirin Abu Akhle and injured uh, her colleague. Uh, and then, once that was thoroughly debunked within a few hours, uh, also thanks to the work of, of B'Tselem itself, uh, they've shifted to what is typical, uh, their routine, which is offering an investigation. Uh, but uh, experience very clearly demonstrates that in the cases of such killings of Palestinians, the announcement of Israel's desire or intention to investigate does not lead to accountability. It's just the, beginnings of, the beginning of the state's organized whitewash. Mm -hmm. Aisha, the, 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 the Israeli government is calling for a joint investigation. The Palestinian Authority says it does not trust a, a joint investigation. Where does this leave the case of Shirin Abu Akhle? Well, uh, let us start with this question. Uh, do we really need an investigation? An investigation is called for when there is doubt. And uh, from what we saw, from what we heard, uh, the, uh, the media professionals, the Palestinians who were uh, there just next to Shirin Abu Akhle, and who were also victims of the same attack, they saw the perpetrators, they are eyewitnesses, and I think they're, uh, they're uh, witnessing this, uh, this uh, targeting of, of uh, Shirin and, and, and her colleagues is quite enough to establish this crime. I, I, I agree with uh, what just has been said. Uh, the, the investigation is an old trick. It's a strategy to uh, muddy the waters, to uh, obfuscate uh, by time until the, the, uh, the outrage and, and the tension is, is diffused. And then is going to be another case uh, or story killed. So I, I, uh, I think that uh, there's enough evidence 
the eyewitnesses uh, are very credible, unless one thinks that Arab Palestinians are not trustworthy to be witnesses of, of, of an attack that they saw the, the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. And that would be another discrimination. Rami, the, uh, the, 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 the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, said that the uh, authority is going to take the case to the ICC, International Criminal Court. Do you see the case taking that path any, 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 any time soon? Oh, it's likely that the ICC will be asked to open an investigation, a preliminary investigation. Reporters Without Borders and Amnesty International have already <clears throat> um, tried to use the International Criminal Court to investigate the Israeli uh, destruction of an entire apartment block of offices last year in Gaza that had the uh, Associated Press and Jazeera and other journalists. So uh, the likelihood of any serious action by the ICC is slim, but the Palestinians uh, are now using every opportunity available to them uh, non-violently and legally um, to mobilize public opinion, to uh, lean on the rule of law, to hold uh, Zionism and Israel accountable uh, for their actions. Um, and I think we will see more calls of this kind, mm -hmm. um, but probably um, very little independent investigation is likely to happen. But I don't think much investigation is needed. If you looked at the Washington Post story this morning by mm -hmm. three terrific reporters on the ground who went there and spent hours investigating every angle, every Israeli claim, every Palestinian claim, and they, they, they said the evidence is pretty clear. Haggai, you spoke of what happened when the Israeli government posted the video showing uh, Palestinian fighters trying to create its own narrative by suggesting that these could be the people who have killed Shirin al Khori, except that when you stepped in as Bitsalim and you said this is absolutely no way that this could have come from those areas. Now, when you look at that position by the Israeli government right after the beginning of the international outcry against the assassination of Shirin Abu Akhla. Do you see the potential for an independent, impartial investigation by the Israeli government that would provide the crucial elements of exactly what happened and the circumstances of the killing of Shirin Abu Akhla? I mean, we have an experience of, unfortunately, of, of many years uh, of work, of the ability to analyze and really understand what the Israeli investigation system is really about. It's not meant to establish accountability. It is meant to protect the perpetrators while pushing against uh, you know, the jurisdiction of international justice, uh, while suggesting that there is domestic recourse, while in fact there isn't. So there's a reason why Israel invests all these efforts in the public relations of what looks like an investigation, uh, so that there won't be international jurisdiction, while at the same time succeeding in providing itself with blanket impunity. And I think from Israel's perspective, looking back at the record from numerous cases of killings of Palestinians in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, in major military operations against Gaza, the uses of snipers against Palestinian demonstrators during the Great March of Return, and so many other examples, eventually Israel managed to get away with it, mm -hmm. both to maintain this reality of committing war crimes uh, and enjoying impunity, and at the same time, somehow preserving its standing uh, in the world uh, as, you know, a, a democratic nation, member of the Western Club of Countries, uh, and so on, with no consequences. And that's really what is essential, what must change if we are to eventually uh, get closer to some sort of justice here. Aisha, when you see the string of international condemnation and statements coming out right after the assassination of Shirin Abu Akhla, the EU urging an independent investigation, the United Nations Human Rights Chief Michel Bachelet saying that it's about time for uh, an end to impunity in Israel. But do you see realistically a chance for a change of behavior in Israel as far as the atrocities committed against journalists? All these statements we've been hearing since yesterday, uh, they've been actually playing at the hands of Israel because they've been also playing the same game of casting doubt about the testimony of the uh, media professional Palestinians who were there and who saw the perpetrators. Um, I think what, uh, what should be uh, looked at right now is the, uh, the big picture, uh, why Shireen was killed, uh, was targeted, 
Well, first of all, because she was a journalist and she was chasing uh, the stories about the crimes and exposing them, but also because she was an Arab Palestinian uh, who was, uh, like uh, most of the Palestinians, targeted. Their existence, the rights to exist, is denied by Israel. And she was uh, chasing the story of apartheid Israel. I think the big picture right now is what happened uh, in, in that camp, why she was there. She was there because Palestinians in a Janine camp, they're living and, under the apartheid Israel. And that is the story. Unless the uh, international, so-called international community deals with this issue, I don't think there would be change. Plus, the, uh, the, the big, uh, I would say, step uh, that has been taken by the UN was actually the report by the rapporteur, special rapporteur Michael Link on, on 22nd March uh, 2022, who exposed for the first time facts that have been documented by Palestinians, by B'Tselem uh, uh, Organization, by Human Rights uh, Watch and, and Amnesty International. So he confirmed that there is an apartheid in, in a system in Israel um, and that, that has to be dismantled. Mm -hmm. Unless the international community deals with this issue, I don't think there would be any change. Rami, there have been many many reports over the last few years by independent media organizations in, in the occupied territories talking and documenting the cases of abuse, um, uh, killing of journalists for many years uh, in those areas. We haven't seen an international outcry. Could the case of Shirin Abu Akli be the moment that would bring together a new awareness about the need to put an end to targeting of journalists? I doubt uh, it'll go that far, but what it will do is add uh, one more um, element in a growing crescendo of international concern, mobilization, action, uh, political pressure, public statements, media coverage, organizing in labor groups and, and universities all over the world, that very, very slow trend in the last uh, 10, 15 years, and especially in the last year, since last May, June, in, in Jerusalem and other places around Palestine, we've seen a significant but slow trend uh, in which governments issue statements, uh, but they don't take action. And now we're seeing more and more action. BDS is the main way that this is happening, but there's also law cases in the United States, parliamentary decisions in Europe, labor union, banks, supermarkets in Europe, places, all saying we will not be complicit in Israel's apartheid colonial system in the occupied Palestinian territory and treatment of Palestinians. Shireen's assassination will add one more uh, push to this, mm -hmm. uh, and it'll bring journalists more actively into this, especially since she was a dual citizen American. Uh, and Palestinian. But the most critical point, mm -hmm. I think, to, to grasp is how this is being framed by Palestinians as part of a hundred year struggle, that this has been going on uh, since the 1920s. And Janine was a center of Palestinian resistance to early Zionism in the 1930s mm -hmm. uh, and has been ever since, uh, as has Gaza. And the Israelis were sending their army, one of the strongest armies in the world, into this warren of uh, the little streets in, in the refugee camp mm. with massive firepower, intelligence, satellite, everything you can think of, uh, and they still can't uh, quell it. They cannot mm. stop the resistance in Janine, and that's why they were there, and that's why Shireen was there, and that's why she was shot. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a bigger story, and the context has to be appreciated as an ongoing uh, resistance war by Palestinians, mostly peaceful, against the colonial Zionist Israeli um, uh, move since the 1910s, 1915, 1917. The balance is still in Israel's favor politically, globally, but it is slowly, slowly moving towards a okay. more even-handed position. This is important. Haggai, I would like your view about, about I guess, the backdrop of what we've been talking about. Now, B'Tselem, the organization that you work for, has been doing an extraordinary work over the last few years in documenting human rights uh, violations in the Israeli-occupied territories. Now, the Israeli government has been really angered by some of your 
a reports to the point where he has been trying to uh, produce new reports, parallel reports to discredit your narrative. At the same time, to give you an, uh, an example, 2019, the United Nations Human Rights Council commissioned its report about, it found that there are indications on the ground that Israeli snipers have been targeting uh, Palestinian journalists who are trying to cover what was happening on the ground. The Israeli government rejected the findings, saying that these are kangaroo court reports. The, the way the Israeli government has been dealing with your reports or with the reports from the international community, what kind of message uh, that is sent before, to the people? Yes, maybe if you allow me just before I address that, mm -hmm. I wanted to add one more thing about the, how critical the impunity is for Israel's oppression of, of Palestinians. Uh, and what I want to spell out is, is, is the following. It's impossible to conduct such an oppressive apartheid regime against an entire people over decades without the usage of organized state violence all the time to take their land, uh, to control them, to oppress them. Um, so the violence is an essential aspect of Israel's ability to do this to, to the Palestinian people. But it has to come hand in hand with the impunity. Because if it, Israel doesn't grant itself the impunity, then it doesn't have the ability to apply this kind of violence and successfully control the Palestinians. Uh, so this is strategic. It's a cornerstone mm -hmm. of Israel's regime. It has to be understood as, as, as a feature of this, uh, of this system. Now, with regard to the way the government addresses our reports and the reports of you know, other human rights organizations, of Palestinian colleagues, international organizations, and so on, it's very typical a response that doesn't address the substance because they really can't argue with, with the facts and with the analysis. Instead of that, they opt to try and shoot the messenger, uh, try and uh, you know, present us as traitors, or in the case of Palestinian colleagues, typically the government would try to present them as terrorists. And with regard to international uh, entities, mm -hmm. uh, usually the government will, will use accusations of anti-Semitism. Okay. Uh, the ICC in itself was blamed by the former prime minister as both supportive of terrorism and anti-Semitism. Aisha, briefly, if you don't mind, could it be this prevailing sentiment, in particularly in the West, that you know? You know what, because these, this is a part of the world where you have dictators, where you have instability and so on and so forth, and violence and radical groups. You know what, who cares about the fate of the journalists when they die? Because you don't get the same response when it comes to a similar case where a Western journalist is targeted, is targeted or is killed. Well, uh, I think the, the main reason is, is because is, uh, Israel is actually the, the product, the byproduct of uh, Western colonial uh, settlers, and uh, this is their baby, basically. So this is uh, whatever Israel is doing is the result of the uh, their creation, uh, which the UN unfortunately uh, contributed to uh, through the, the partition uh, resolution and uh, all over the the, the, the action and, and lack of action it, it, it undertook. So. That's uh, that's basically the the, uh, the reason why they they, uh, they don't want to uh, to hold uh, uh, Israel to account. But the UN has a major role to play. Uh, I would say first that uh, it has to follow up on the uh, Michael Link report on the uh, apartheid Israel mm -hmm. and the need for a dismantling it. Second, there is a, a UN Security a Security Council resolution two three three four that was adopted in two thousand sixteen which calls on ending the occupation and also ending the illegal settlements that also has to, to, to uh, needs a, a follow-up by the, the Palestine, the state of Palestine. Mm -hmm. There is also uh, the ICC. The ICC, we haven't heard Karim Khan. Uh, he was very quick uh, to, uh, to, to take the first uh, uh, plane to, uh, to Ukraine and, and uh, start the investigation. And we haven't heard from him on when it comes to Palestine. It's Thank been you. one year he, since... So uh, these are the three uh, major uh, decision makers that need to do uh, the right thing in order to dismantle the upper tide. Thank you very much indeed. This is exactly what Shirin Abu Akhla said when she was last interviewed. I first went into Jenin uh, refugee camp 20 years ago. Before that, I had to overcome my fear. I chose to become a journalist because I wanted to be close to people.
Uh, Aisha Al-Basri, Rami Al-Khouri, Hagai Lada, really appreciate your insight. Thank you. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com, for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashem Ahalbara, and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now. <laughs>